Hi, uh, my name's Phil, and in today's workshop we're going to talk about how to make a pinhole camera. A pinhole camera is a way of capturing pictures in the old style, before there were lenses or before there were fancy things. So. We have three, three sections that we're going to develop the pinhole camera. The first thing we're going to need is a box. This is the most simple way. A box with a hole that we're going to make. We need something to make a pinhole. So we need a, a needle or a drill. And we need some sort of metal. So the metal we're going to use is a metal from a soft drink can. Um, we can use thing, things like brass, brass sheeting. Uh, the thinner the sheet, the better, so that when we make the hole in the tin, the hole is perfectly round. The rounder the hole, the better the picture. This is a picture taken from a pinhole camera. So you can see that you can get good quality. So we need a box. We need some, something to take the picture on. This is paper, photographic paper. Um, and then basically once we, we take the picture, we need to be able to develop it using some chemicals um, and the trick that I usually use to do that is I actually use a jewellery box so I have three, three stages of the jewellery box and in each stage I put one chemical so we could either do this inside a dark bag or if at home you can make a dark room you can get rid of all the light you can take a bicycle light a red bicycle light and you could use that to illuminate the room and then you can develop your paper using this jewellery tray. So we put one chemical in the top, one in the middle and one in the bottom. Either make a box or buy a box, save yourself a few hours of gluing and sticking and all you need to do is put a hole in the bottom of the box, a big hole, because the small hole will go onto the metal and that will go inside the box so all you'll see is just that tiny little hole through the middle and to hold that in position we just use some some tape which i didn't get out of the box from before but i should have so yeah so we just need some black tape usually tape that's not reflective this is hockey tape from a hockey stick so it's usually the best so we take the metal um, Coca-Cola can or whatever, we drill the hole through it or we push the hole through it. And then once, we do, once we've pushed the hole through it, we get a little piece of sandpaper and we just rub the back of it so that it's smooth. Because if it has a little tiny burr on it, that will stop the light from coming to the uh, camera the way we want it to. And then of course we just cut it out into a circle and we stick it on the inside of the box like this so that the pinhole is in the middle and we have a camera. Yeah. So that's the first step. The next step is to put the paper, because we're shooting on paper instead of film, um, because this particular paper is called positive paper. So when we take the picture, once we develop it, it comes out looking like this. So it comes out ready to look at. We don't have to do any more work to it. So we need to put the paper inside the box so that it stays still. Usually what we do is just put a little bit of blue tack or sticky tape on the inside and we put it into the box and then we put the, the box cover over, the, over the, um, the box but we make sure that we've got something covering the box so that there's no light getting into it. So again we can take a piece of tape, whatever sort of tape and put it over the front of the box so that becomes almost like a, like a shutter I guess to stop the light from getting into the box once we've got the paper. So the idea is that once we're ready to take the picture, we can put this on a solid surface. We can pull it open and leave it for however long we want to. Um, and then basically cover it back up again. And we have inside here a picture on the paper. It's undeveloped. So what we need to do then, of course, is to take it out and develop it. And this is where having either a black bag, they have a special photographic bag that has arm sleeve holes, or if you want to, you can get an old t-shirt. If you can get like your, your uncle's t-shirt, as long as he's a pretty big guy, a big t-shirt, and you can sew up one end of it and that can become like a, a dark bag. 
So you can do everything inside that bag. Um, but let's say that you've got a bathroom at home, for example, that you can close off all the light. So inside the bathroom, we can then take the paper out of the box. And at this stage, we won't see anything. It'll be, it'll be just, it'll actually be pink. You won't see anything. We can then put the chemicals in and we can make the picture. So the next step, I guess, now is to mix the chemicals. So these particular chemicals that we buy are chemicals for developing paper. So there are three chemicals. There is a developer, which is this one here. There is a, what they call a stop bath. So what happens is with the developer, when you, you mix it with water and you put it in the top tray, you mix the stop bath with water as well, put it in the middle tray, and then you mix, put the fixer in the bottom tray. So we start with the developer. The developer, it makes everything sort of go black. So, you know, on the paper, the paper is basically made of silver. It has silver on it. So the developer turns that silver black. Um, and so at that stage, once we put it in the tray, you can actually watch it and you can see as you put it in the, in the developer, as you sort of rock it from side to side gently, you'll see the picture magically appear before your eyes. And that's the best part of doing this sort of photography because it's, it's like magic. Uh, and so it usually only takes about a minute for the picture to become visible. And so what happens is, the with the developer, we don't want to, we want to stop it from developing. Otherwise, if we leave it in there, everything will just go blacker and blacker and blacker. So the idea of the stop bath is it stops the developer from developing. So it sort of stops all of the, the processes. And in fact, you don't necessarily have to buy stop bath. You can use vinegar. Vinegar is, a, is good as a, as a stop bath. So if you go to the shop and buy some white vinegar, put some of that in a bit of water. So we've developed the, the first part, we've taken it out of the tray, we put it into the second tray where the stop bath is for about 30 seconds and we just gently rock it so it'll sort of swish around. And then once we've done that, we can take it out again and we can put it in the fixer. So what happens with the fixer, the fixer is what makes it complete. So if we were to take it out of the stop bath and walk outside into the light, then the picture would go black because the fixer is what stops it from, or makes it so we can use it in the light. So again, we put it into that bottom tray for around about a minute and we rock it backwards and forwards again. And then we take it out and we put it into water under a tap in the, in the basin or in a plastic dish and we wash it for maybe 10 minutes and that will wash away all of the chemicals um, and then it will be, that will be a finished picture. But of course, once you've washed it, it's, it's very sort of, it's wet. So you've got to dry it. So you need to put it somewhere to dry out. So um, what typically happens with this type of paper is as it dries out, it curls up. It, goes, it can even curl up like this. So after it's dry, maybe after a day or so, you put it inside a book and put some weight on top of it and that will flatten it out so it's, it's nice and flat. But then once you've done that, you've got a unique one-off picture that can never be recreated again because it's, a, it's a, a moment in time that, you know, it's, a, it's an original. So unlike a digital picture where you can print it many, many times, um, this is really just your memory of that particular moment in time on the, on the paper. And so that's really the, the basic steps to making a pinhole image and developing it. Um, so you can see that you don't need a lot of super fancy equipment. You just need something to, to make the camera with. You need something to hold the, or to make a hole through the tin. You need some chemicals to, to um, develop the picture. The only thing you really need to know is how long do I leave the pinhole open for? And this is always the tricky part. But you'll find that there are uh, places on the internet. You can download charts like this one. This is a chart that has a, you can make up. It has a wheel that you can once you've uh, found out the, the size of the hole in your, your uh, tin, it'll tell you how many seconds that you need to leave this open to develop the picture. And a lot of it will be by trial and error. So there will be some pictures that will be perfect, like this one, and there'll be some that are not perfect, like this one, because this one was too long. So you can see it's still not a bad picture. It's quite, quite interesting, actually. But 
it's, it's overexposed. So we've lost, and this one is underexposed. So this one wasn't left open long enough. This was open, left open too long, but this one was, was perfect. So that's essentially the steps that you need to do to, to make your own pinhole camera. And you can use anything to make a pinhole camera. This is a mason jar. So all I did was painted the inside black. So I could put a piece of paper in here, or cut it to a circle. I could put the pinhole behind it. I could take a round picture. It's even got like a handle on it. So you could sort of take the picture. So you could use anything. This is a, a, a wooden, like a bookshelf from you know, the cheap stores that you use for a camera. You can make one out of foam core. This is one I made out of foam core that I put a, a uh, tin in front and it even has a, has a screen on the back where you can focus the camera so you can move this in and out. So you can actually look at the camera, look at the picture, you can focus it and when you're ready, you put the film into a holder, you put it inside the camera, take the picture and then when you're done, you process it the same as you would with anything else and this is what you get. So there are many, many ways to do it, not just with a box. People, people make pinhole cameras out of watermelons. They punch a hole through the watermelon and put a lens on one side and the paper on the other and they get all sorts of really cool pictures out of it. So it's, like, it's a pretty fun exercise to do. And that's the way you make a pinhole camera.